Hello. Hello. How's it going? Good. I am in day three of playing Animal Crossing New Horizons. <laughs> oh, that's what the NH is, yeah. I was wondering. I knew there were other words associated with it, but I never actually bothered to look it up. Yeah. How's it going on in that game? You're enjoying I've yourself. never played Animal Crossing yeah. before, ever. Like yeah. It's a thing <laughs> mm -hmm. that exists with other games and uh, for other consoles. Because uh, I watched actually Mark from Zealand Plays shared on Twitter the um, honest game review on mm. uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Did it on Animal Crossing. It's pretty funny. So if you play Animal Crossing or know anything about it, I highly recommend checking out that video. Um, yeah, it's fun. I... Um, the question is, how long can I play before I get tired of it? That's kind of like, I mean, I know that the, it keeps building up. Like, there's a next layer, Does there next appear level. to be a story? Uh, the story is... You like, I mean, like Breath of the Wild, you're a completionist, so you like do mm -hmm. all the side stuff, but ultimately like you play it until it's, you beat it. It seems infinite to me. Mm. <laughs> That's the sense I got. I don't know if there's an end. Uh, I know that... So you have an island and basically you can, you, well, you build a house and owe this guy, Tom Nook, a bunch of money and then you can get a bigger house and owe him more money. I have not done that part yet. Uh, you can also invite people to live with you. You can visit other people's islands if you have, if you're friends with them on the Nintendo Switch. Um, there are fruits and flowers that are specific to your island. So it feels like pretty soon there's got to be a WooTuber island hangout. There probably will be. Yeah. So far, I play, Mike and Britt play. I think Expecto Go might start playing James and Sue. Uh, we're trying to get Matt from Animega. I'm just like calling everybody out right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to get Matt to play. Um, I heard Slytherwin is playing and Lady Brittany are playing. Yeah, a bunch of people are playing. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. Because I, I think that's probably why I'm asking myself, like, how long am I going to play this before I get tired of it? Because there's there doesn't seem to be, like, oh, this is the final boss. You did mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. It's, like, do this forever. And I'm, mm -hmm. like, all right. I've been surprised, although I know how the new game Fever goes. You've been playing when you're not streaming. So you like, mm -hmm. yeah, so maybe it'll quickly evolve into something that you only play on a stream and that's how you enjoy it although what i do like is that there appear to be fish that mm -hmm. or and probably bugs that are seasonal or that come out at June certain bugs. times of the day so that's exciting yeah well because there also seems well based on this honest game review uh just that there's also seasonal things like holidays and whatever so I mean, there's stuff to do because, I mean, granted, I play Wizards Unite and I, that's a game that seems to yeah. last forever but we can't without get out, an end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no. I don't have my wand. We're going to have to pretend that my wand is right here. I don't know where it is. <laughs> oh, wait. I see it. I see it. Grab it. Be right back. <laughs> this is a crucial part of the, the intro feel of the podcast. Uh, you want to get into it then? I am ready. All right. Juan's ready. Turn to page 182, The Dueling Club. Today's lesson is called Misunderstood. Pretty simple. Uh, synopsis. Let me make sure to scroll down and get all of it. It's a long chapter. I tried to be brief. The chapter begins with Harry being released from the hospital wing, his arm healed. He, fe he finds Ron and Hermione in Myrtle's bathroom brewing polyjuice potion. The news over Colin's petrification has circulated the school, but Harry tells them about Dobby's time in the hospital wing, too. The trio execute a distraction in Snape's potions class to steal ingredients they need to finish the polyjuice potion. Students at Hogwarts, like Neville and Ginny, are stressed about their safety, and Professor Lockhart decides to start a dueling club. Professor Snape, suspicious of Harry as always, pairs Harry and Malfoy together to duel. Eventually, Malfoy summons a snake, who Harry convinces not to attack Justin Finch Fletchley using parcel tongue. Everyone is suspicious of Harry after that, since they only heard him speaking to the snake, not what he said. 
Further, Slytherin was famously a parcel mouth, piling more evidence on Harry. Things only worsen when Harry innocently comes upon a horrific scene with a petrified nearly headless Nick and Justin Finch Fletchley, and students openly accuse Harry as the perpetrator. The chapter ends with Harry being led into Dumbledore's office for the first time. Yay, da, 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 Dumbledore! Da. Lemon drop, I think, <laughs> yeah, was the yeah, password. Yeah, lemon drop was yeah. the password to get in. Uh, Miss Ginny Weasley is distraught again. Poor Ginny. Yes, she is. She's like literally just a sentence in these chapters. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, Ginny was upset. And they gave her a paragraph because it was like Percy berating Fred no, and George. No, but it wasn't about Ginny. It was like other scared. people reacting to Ginny. Yeah. Like the yeah. actual mention of Ginny is only a sentence. And we also, I think, so much is so fun when reading this particular mystery when you know the ending mm-hmm. because there's all these little things because it's yeah. like the, the roosters. Hagrid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Second rooster, whatever. So I loved the the trade that was going on the hidden um trades among students because they're freaking out they're like we need these like magical sure, objects sure, sure, sure. <laughs> and neville okay so the things that neville acquires are a large evil smelling green onion which is a very strange thing That'll to work. describe um so when i was browsing through harry potter lexicon and all those sites uh apparently the description might be similar to something called a Gertie root, which Luna Lovegood will Gertie mention root. later in a later Luna. book. Yeah. Um, so apparently a Gertie root can protect against gulping plimpies. Uh, <laughs> so it's something. I don't know. Yep. I, don't, I don't even know if, Checks out. if the students like actually su- suspect a specific you know beast or creature or thing right, right. Um, but they're just pulling at anything so there's another thing that neville acquires is a pointed purple crystal which made me laugh because uh, when i was reading the forums they were like yeah that might not actually be effective it might just be you know uh just this thing like a stone yep um and then the third thing is a rotting newt tail so i was trying to find anything specific on this i couldn't um, apparently newt or salamander tails can rot off like that's a thing mm. and mm. apparently that actually also comes up in or with hagrid like says something about how to cure it i don't know um salamander rot yeah i think yeah so. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and sal or newts can regenerate their limbs yes their eyes their spinal cords their hearts their intestines and what? their upper and lower jaws. That is amazing evolution. Yeah. <laughs> Actually. It's crazy. Astonishing. Yeah. I can't believe that. Harry needed a potion to regrow his bone. You I know. know. <laughs> well, I mean, it was pretty quick. It was so like Saturday was the Quidditch match and then Sunday morning he has his bones yeah. back. So. No, it's pretty astonishing. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. Uh, we get into... The oh, actually, your card though was from the potions fiasco, right? Yes, that it Harry is. started. Yes, he fires off the firework. That was the scene I actually left out of there. I knew yeah, I yeah, did yeah. in the synopsis, but yeah. Harry tried not to laugh as he watched Malfoy hurry forward. It's gonna be tough to get to to look right, but you can try if you want. It's usually pretty blurry. Well, I think it's because our faces are here. I don't know how to how to make it not on my face. Yeah. How do I cover my face? <laughs> Look at the swelling solution. Just put it closer, maybe. Oh, there you go. Look at those eyeballs. <laughs> if you're watching it's the podcast episode, uh, you have the puffy eyes. You have the puffy nose. It's like weighing Draco down. I remember we had opened that one. So when I got to the scene, I was like, oh, we opened that one because we talked about it. <laughs> yeah. Even though I don't think we've published that video yet, I was like, oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> I didn't remember the scene. I didn't recall it mm. from my reading. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we get into the dueling club, which, mm-hmm. Lockhart, classic Lockhart. Um, so the students that are in the dueling club, I mean, we don't, I don't think we get all of them, but we know our trio is in there, Seamus, Neville, Justin Finch Fletchley, Draco, and then Millicent, Millicent Bolstrode, who um, Snape pairs Hermione with, mm-hmm. she is a half-blood Slytherin witch, although the Bolstrode family is actually one of the Sacred 28. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have Ernie McMillan, which we'll get to oh, also the Arnold. later. Ernie is a Hufflepuff, pure blood, part of the Sacred Twenty Eight. His family is the McMillan family. Mm-hmm. Uh, he later accuses Harry of being the heir of Slytherin. Yeah. What? Yeah, he sure does. Calm down, dude. He sure does. Uh, and then we have a Miss Folly, who I couldn't find much about. Apparently, oh, I didn't even. See oh, sorry, that. it, it auto corrected. It's Fawcett, not Folly. I was like, that's too specific. Miss okay. Fawcett. Sorry, okay, okay, back okay. it up. Oh my gosh! I just typed Grim Folly so many <laughs> times. <laughs> my, <laughs> my phone auto corrected <laughs> yeah, it to right. Folly. Uh, Miss Fawcett, uh, who I think has the initial S Fawcett. That's what I was finding mm-hmm. in different uh, things. She's Ravenclaw. Not much is known about the. Fawcett family other than they live near the Weasleys, the Diggories, and the Lovegoods. That's all we know. S. Fawcett. I wonder if the S stands for Slytherin or Serpent Fawcett. No, I'm just Yeah, kidding. that's definitely it. <laughs> In Ravenclaw. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe she's the heir. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, and then she Terry... She's also an heir. Yeah, Terry Boot, who is a Terry Ravenclaw. Boot, yes. Yes. Those are the characters that were uh, mentioned in passing. In this exchange, I mean, I mean, we see it over and over, but we see Snape in uh, multiple contexts. We see him in the potions classroom, and yes. we also see him in the dueling club. And he is just so malicious. It's super annoying, like towards Harry. Like, yeah, he's really cruel to Neville, too. Yeah, Neville. Yeah. Poor Neville. He, he's quite cruel. Yeah, the whole scene in the dueling club is pretty great, though. I mean, like... Cause there's, cause Snape and Lockhart together is like <laughs> such the odd couple. They're just perfect foils for each other. Cause like you don't really, at least I don't like either of them really at this yeah. point at all. And uh, but for totally totally different reasons, that there is something like somewhat satisfying about Snape just blasting Lockhart <laughs> in the chest with Expelliarmus. Except Lockhart ah, is annoying, and he's like, yeah, oh, I wanted it to be, like, mm-hmm. a, an exercise. And it's like, just stop talking. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's fine. Yeah. You're incompetent. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah, that's perfectly the way to describe it is, like, everything Lockhart says is, like, an eye roll and a, and a sigh, and everything Snape says is, like, a dagger. <laughs> <laughs> He does, he like Snape doesn't uh, waste his words. He, nah. He's very mean with them. Oh, uh, and then we get this spell from Malfoy, Serpent Sword Chef. Yes. Mm. Also, Rictum Sempra. Yeah, which I thought was fun. Yeah. I looked it up on Pottermore, the tickling charm. Yeah. So there's dueling club in Hogwarts Mystery, or well, there is dueling club, and then there's like yeah. duels that you can do. And sometimes I use it, and I always I. This is a spell I cannot commit to my memory because every time I use it in that game and I'm like and I see the reaction and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's the tickling spell. And right. then it just leaves my memory. And then the next time yeah, I do it right. again and I'm like, oh, what's this? Oh, it's the tickling spell. I don't know. I cannot put it in my mind that this is the, the tickling spell. Yeah. It just Now that works. For, that fits for me, too. It's like, <laughs> I, yeah, I had to like really think about it. And then we find out the reveal. <gasps> Harry Potter is a parcel mouth. And my favorite scene from this is like, Ron's like, you're a parcel mouth. And Harry's like, I'm a I'm what? A what? <laughs> <laughs> Throwback. <laughs> yes. You're Harry Potter. Wizard, Harry. You're not just a wizard, but you also can speak to snakes. Yep. Surprise. Oh, yeah. I once talked to a bow constrictor. I know. Never told you about that. So, I mean, honestly, I was a little conflicted because I was a bit annoyed at Harry uh, so earlier in the chapter, Ron says to Hermione, she says something, I forgot like what, what it was that she was when she was doing research, and Ron says to her, you read too much. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, all right, Ron. But at the same time, if you think about it, Harry and Hermione kind of start, well, they don't really start <laughs> off like in the same timeline in terms of like, Harry basically just finds out about this wizarding world, like, I don't know, less than a month before he goes mm-hmm. off to Hogwarts. <laughs> But they're both in a similar position where there's not really a, like a history that they uh, grew up with. Yeah, it always bugs me that Harry doesn't read more. He doesn't offer like. Yeah. Okay. Even and so I wrote in my notes. So like. It just doesn't mesh with how because I've oh of course played through it right of like oh what if I was a wizard and I'd be like I would find out everything. <laughs> well, it it doesn't. Okay, so in my notes I wrote that. 
he doesn't have to be like Hermione. He doesn't have to try to know everything. But at the very least, you're going after, you're targeting this thing because of Salazar Slytherin and you're trying to find the heir of Slytherin. Like, why don't you do and your research on him? he's rather famously a parcel mouth. Yeah, <laughs> do it, your research yeah, on yeah, him. Yeah. And stop being so mediocre, Harry. Live up to your chosen, or at least half of the version of a chosen one where you're <laughs> at least focused on something instead of wandering aimlessly. Come on, dude. Yeah. Oh, this is why Hermione just but he has a lot on him. his plate too. I mean, yeah. Hermione is incredibly, incredibly important to the, all of the stories. <laughs> like if it was just Harry and Ron, they would get nowhere. Yeah. They would just flounder and do nothing. She just carries too much. Harry, look up just something, something specific. Yeah. That is my rant at Harry when he's 12. All right. Yep. Yeah. Read more. <laughs> or just have stuff. some sort of initiative at yeah. all. That's not just like based on your, oh, it's Malfoy. Let's get Malfoy. Come no, on. do something to help yourself out. Um, and then, so he's, Harry is obviously stressing out because it's like the parcel mouth. And his best friends basically kind of say, like, this you could be the good. heir. This does not look good. And You're hearing he's like, voices. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, but I'm not related to him. And Hermione is like, I don't know. He's really old. He could be your great, 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 great grandfather. It's hard for you not to, to prove that he's not. And it's just like, oh, snap. Oh, Harry. So he's like stressed out thinking to himself. And so the quote I wrote down was, but I'm in Gryffindor. The sorting hat wouldn't have put me in here if I had Slytherin blood. Mm -hmm. And I, it was so interesting to me because... Again, so we have this introduction. So if you think about it again, Harry, somewhat blank slate, entering this wizarding world and then picking up again on these discourses about blood purity or blood whatever, something associating blood with any sort of characteristic like the Hogwarts house that you're part of. And it's interesting how he is literally taking up these discourses, maybe kind of like remixing them a little bit, but it's he doesn't have to so it, it's going to be interesting to see how this develops um mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. over the course of harry's own journey and as he's like figuring out how he fits or where he fits in the wizarding world yes. but that stood out to me this time yeah the other thing that i looked up but i couldn't really decide whether there was too much to share so this is the only thing that i'll share is i looked up par like parcel mouths uh -huh. other people who are par parcel mouths Ooh. and obviously like there's several that we come across like in later books mm -hmm. um but one who i believe we've talked about on the podcast before i know you and i have before herpo the fowl i think we also have like maybe his card. chocolate chocolate frog card maybe. or something so he was a he was a rather bad wizard uh Long, before actually the founders so there was some speculation on potter more that mm -hmm. he might be an ancestor to slytherin mm -hmm. because of because of how strictly it seems that being a parcel mouth seems to follow mm -hmm. genetically yeah yeah so that was kind of interesting so he was herple the fowl is the person who um invented basilisks i believe or bred them he bred the first basilisk Yes. Yeah, you remember that? That was yes. like last book or something. Um, wait, why was, was I like looking up? I might have the said... thing under a chicken or yeah, something. Yeah, I think I, I, I think that was from Wizards Unite because we had the Basilisk event right, in right. Uh, for it Halloween. I think that's why I talked about it. Yeah, old Herpo. Yeah, Herpo yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. He did a lot of other things. He he invented a lot of things, hmm. uh, including, not to get too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, Apparently, he may have invented or at least been one of the first known wizards to create a horcrux or yeah, was speculated feel, to be like so. I feel like we've talked about Herpo yeah. before because because of all of these connections. Actually, yeah. he might have been one of the, um, in my research, because there was a question for Wizards Unite specifically of like, if Voldemort is dead, why are all these bad things happening? And my response was like, well, there were bad wizards before right. Voldemort. There are bad ones after. Like, you know, like that's kind of mm -hmm. expected. And mm -hmm. Herpo was definitely one of them because I'm like, dude, this guy is, I don't yeah. know, what's your deal? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah because in, at least in the article that I looked at, it seemed like there was no consensus as to whether if he had a Horcrux, it had been destroyed. So he may mm -hmm. be like partially alive, alive still. Yeah. <laughs> that was, uh, 
Yeah. So that was kind of it. I mean, for the most part, there weren't too many other parcel mouths named, except mm-hmm. for like a particular family that we'll come across in the mm-hmm. later book six. Yeah. yeah. So even though I ranted about Harry just a few minutes ago, mm-hmm. I also feel bad for oh, him. Harry. I mean, he's got a lot. Like, gosh, he could not be in the worst yeah, for situation. Sure. For I mean, sure. like people are already expecting him. And then like, what are the odds that, well, first of all, actually, this is what I wanted to talk about somewhat is, do you think Snape, so after Harry sets off the firework, Snape like kind of eyes him right because Mm -hmm. one he's already suspicious but we learn later in later book that Snape is quite good at uh legitimacy yes occlumency yes so like to some extent he can read minds especially somebody who's not defending their mind like Harry right um (laughs) so yeah Harry's just trying to keep a straight face but we all know he's probably pretty bad at poker um So I was thinking, like, at that point, did Snape kind of get a sense that Harry could speak parcel tongue? So it's interesting. That that he had been, like, hearing things or whatever. Because he Uh he specifically whispers to Malfoy to cast that spell. It's like, it almost feels like he tells Malfoy about the spell. Malfoy uses that spell. It just so happens to be summoning a snake. Come on. Yeah. Coincidence. Uh, So it's interesting you brought it up because I searched this on Reddit. There was a question. Old Reddit. So there are two things. One is um, there were some people who were arguing that we don't know that that is what Snape told Malfoy. Mm. It's possible that Malfoy happened to know that spell. I don't know. He's rich. He could probably have private tutors or whatever or whatever. Um, I don't know. Maybe his family loves snakes also because he's obsessed with Slytherin. I don't know. Um, So we don't know for sure if that's exactly the spell however the original poster was speculating that snape actually from the very beginning when we first saw mrs norris being petrified and Mm -hmm. they all run over that it might have been possible that he read harry's mind just a little Mm -hmm. or like entered Mm -hmm. his mind um i'm not sure to what extent because Legelamans is like a super intense it is, interaction. It is, it is. However, the person... When we see it portrayed, at least, although I can't yeah. quite remember the book, it's like Harry is kind of aware of the uh, spell being used on him. But I think that but there's, there's different more subtle layers. Versions. Right, because yeah. so in Fantastic Beasts movies, we have Queenie, mm. who can also read people's minds, but it's not as it's not um, it's like intrusive. Right. Yeah, it's... a. Uh, it, or it's, more of it's, an empath, right? it's kind of like she can hear it and then she like reacts and that's how you know she's reading her mind or right. your mind because she's reacting to what you just thought and that's how people <laughs> figure out rather than like I'm entering Sorry. it and um and specifically with like Snape and Harry later on like that's that's actually like training so it's supposed to be like super like he's trying to help him close off Right. right, whatever. So, um, yeah, so that was actually a discussion that I had never thought about except for when I was reading. And I, and because, I mean, if you're writing anything, like you can choose what to say, right? Mm-hmm. So she didn't have to say, like, oh, Snape whispered into Malfoy's ear mm-hmm. and blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah, blah. And then, like, this unfolds. So it makes sense that, like, that could be a conclusion or, like, some sort of, like, hmm, huh, I wonder why he did that. Like, why did he did he do it on purpose like snape is just sketchy i I keep thinking in my mind now of alan rickman like his face you know and it's just like the camera's panning in and he's just like "Hmm," (laughs) you know because that because yeah i think the counter to what i was speculating is sort of like it's all it almost feels like snape maybe told malfoy because he knew harry wouldn't really be able to handle it very easily because then like he strides forward kind of like like, i'll take care of it i'll deal with it potter (laughs) you know that kind of thing yeah yeah i I'm also, uh, is that Winston? Yeah, it's fine. Just ignore him. He's uh, also appreciative of Harry sticking up for himself in this chapter. Mm-hmm. He actually like, he because sometimes he just walks away, which yeah. is a good strategy. But with Ernie, he's just like, no, Dude, I was so angry. I was telling him not to attack, telling the snake not to attack Justin. Like, mm-hmm. give me a break. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I I wrote notes about that. Like that's why I felt bad for Harry because this dude is just he's, he's misunderstood. going off. <laughs> Ernie is just railing like he's yeah. with his Hufflepuff kids, 
And like, so you have people and they're kind of like, I don't know. And he just keeps going on. And it's like this, the very like, uh, just ugly, like rumor. Like you're just, you're just building this rumor. You know nothing about Harry Potter. You know nothing about his circumstances, Mm -hmm. but you're trying to craft this narrative Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. fit whatever it is you're trying to say. And it's so disturbing. I don't like it. And you know what? It's very disturbing. And you know what's even more is that it has a payoff. It's quite fascinating how J.K. Rowling weaves this type of thing, what rumors are about and how much they affect how people treat Harry. Because in my search on Parcel Mouse, couple of quotes that i found from later books one is from rita Uh skeeter yeah one is from fudge minister of magic Uh both referring to the fact that harry is a parcel mouth and Mm -hmm. holding it against him despite uh at least one of them kind of probably knowing like how this all plays out but maybe not believing it as we find out yeah yeah so it's a lot and Ernie's so, uh, like he's like fighting back at Harry. Harry's trying to defend himself, and then he's and then he like plays o- along with it, just like completely dismissing Harry, and says, "You can trace my family back through nine generations. My blood's as pure as anyone's." And I'm like, "Dude, okay." So at that Harry's point, like, I don't care. Yeah, he's like, "I don't care." We relax. At that point in the chapter, I was like, "Wow." Last year, we were all just having fun. We were 11 years old. Now we're 12. It, it, it actually made me pause because it made me think uh, this is like not exactly a good comparison, but like the current state right now with COVID-19 and like so having something that's like a uh, like a shock, like a tragic thing that happens. How do people respond? Like what bubbles up to the top? Like we've been talking about this all book long, like it's not that uh, like pure blood supremacy just came into play in book two of the Harry Potter series. Like it was right. already an existing thing in the wizarding world. And so now we see it come up because we have this specific situation that kind of pulls that out into the light. So I don't know. It's kind of wild how fast it is. Yeah, All this happened. Yeah, it is. So at the by the end of it, Harry is uh, being led away by McGonagall, who never like really sticks up for Harry. It's very frustrating. Yeah. In a lot of ways, she's just always like, I don't know. She, she's kind of stern in that way. Mm-hmm. Like she doesn't speculate, but like, you know. Yeah, she's, she's like, go just... away, peeves. Come with me, <laughs> right, Potter. Right. And like, Actually, you know. so before that, Harry runs into Hagrid. Right. Uh, so this is the last thing that I have in my notes. So Hagrid said, like, oh, it could be... Oh, I forgot the first thing he said. It's either this or it's a blood-sucking bugbear. And I was like, what is that? Bugbears. <laughs> and so apparently a bugbear is an imaginary creature historically used to frighten naughty children into behaving. So like a boogeyman. Yes. And um, given... So I, what I, the second thing I found is that Given that it's a regional term for what is also called a bug art, it's possible that the blood-sucking uh, bugbear is a variety or relative of bog art. Very interesting. And this may be why Newt's commander does not cover the creature in the 52nd edition of Fantastic Beasts and Weird Fun, though, <laughs> because bog arts are classified as non-beings. Uh-huh. So that was the fun fact for bugbear. Because they are not living. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah. Bugbears. But that might be killing the roosters. <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably it. <laughs> it's actually something even less suspicious than a bugbear. <laughs> but well, we'll get to that oh bridge dear. when we oh dear. need it's to cross. It's more it. terrifying, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. All right. You got anything else? No, that's all. I thought all. not because you said wrote, this was my last thing. Enter Dumbledore's office is the last thing I wrote. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, well, until next time, Juan's ready. ready.